of them. I don't know if it's going to be at the same time. Uh, I have a friend who works as a part-time steam fireman at the Grand Canyon Railway. He also works part-time for the Oregon Coast Scenic Railroad, which operates on the former Tillamook branch of the Southern Pacific, which connects Portland with the coast. The headquarters and shops are in a fishing town called Garibaldi. In early 2018, he had hinted that there was going to be a great steam up later that fall, with as many as five locomotives operating. Considering they were a volunteer operation, that would require a lot of crews and they could need some extra help. It sounded like a lot of fun and a great adventure, so I penciled it on my calendar. I even planned to increase my adventure by riding Amtrak's Coast Starlight up to Portland. As it turned out, the locomotive count went from 5 to 3. The main locomotive was the McLeod 25, a 262 that received fame by chasing Will Wheaton, River Phoenix, Corey Feldman, and Jerry O'Connell across a remote train trestle in the 1986 film Stand By Me. The Polson II had recently arrived at the Oregon coast in 2018, having spent many years at the Mid-Continent Railroad Museum in North Freedom, Wisconsin. A saturated 282 built by Baldwin for logging operations, it had been purchased by a private owner and leased to the Wisconsin Museum. After being seriously wore out, the owner completed a time-consuming and extensive rebuild, only to find that political winds had changed and they were no longer interested in continuing the lease. Unfortunately, this resulted in an ugly lawsuit and a need to find a new home for an attractive city. Ironically, number two returned to its Pacific Northwest roots when it arrived on the Oregon coast with a new lease on land. Number two has little modern conveniences and still possesses its early 1900s style backwards charm. Slide valves are controlled by the Stevenson valve gear and the multitude of oil points need to be serviced almost every time the train stops. The McLeod 25 is slightly more modern with a superheated boiler, piston valves, Washert's valve gear, and some mechanical lubrication. Neither locomotive had any trouble for the level grades found on the coast. The third locomotive to be used for the event is one that has developed its own fame in rail fan circles. The Skookum is a unique 2442 articulated compound Mallee from Baldwin, of which there were only a few built and none of them exactly the same. It has a very amazing history of being derailed deep in the woods, hauled out in pieces, and transferred owners multiple times until finally being rebuilt at the Oregon Coast Shops in Garibaldi, Oregon. Its expected completion prompted the five days of photo charters by Lero Productions in October 2018. There were two train consists made up, a mixed freight and a log train. The 25 and 2 swapped consists each day for a variety. My job was the conductor on the log train, which meant I spent a lot of time riding on the back of an empty flat car while we meandered slowly through the woods in damp seaside air, engulfed in the sounds of steam whistles echoing off the coastal mountains.
two shifts, an AM and a PM. I was on the AM shift, so most of these photos were taken during the afternoons while I chased the train movements. In Garibaldi, there is a fishing pier, which was used multiple times as a photo location since it allows you to be able to get a photo of the train directly against the waters of the Tillamook Bay. south towards Tillamook, there are two bridges over backwater sloughs. We used these often in the afternoon as one of the few places you could get on the west side of the tracks without getting your feet wet. They also made a great location for our silhouettes in the afternoon. This stretch along the bay has some very interesting rock formations in the water. North of Garibaldi is Smith Lake. The railroad runs on an embankment right down the middle. About seven miles from Garibaldi, the tracks go through the seaside town of Rockaway Beach. This is the only place where you can directly see the Pacific Ocean from the train. We didn't do any run-bys here, but I caught a couple of positioning moves. This spot over the Tidewater Flats was used multiple times, mostly during the morning when the tide was in and the area was under shallow water. I caught this positioning move in the afternoon when the tide was out. My favorite shots were in the town of Wheeler, where an old sawmill used to be. The tracks from here follow the Nehalem River up into a gorge as they cross the mountains and connect with the rest of the railroad network. Washouts in the gorge have severed the line from the outside world and the photo charters did not venture much past Wheeler itself. Skookum never made it out of the shop when I was there. It did get fired up and staged for side-by-side -side shots in a whistleblower, but attempts to move it under its own power did not go well.
the shop crews wouldn't get the bugs worked out until several months later. I did finally get to see it in operation the following April at the Niles Canyon Railway in California.